Hey, Rez, how's everybody doing today? Come on, who's happy to be in church? All right, I'm looking around. I want you to know you look good and you made it to 1015 worship experience, the first ever that I'm aware of at Rez, and you made it. And this is a successful start. Come on, guys, give yourself a hand for showing up. So glad that you guys uh, are here. Now, uh, why don't you turn to your neighbor, look right at him and say, you look good. I see Jesus on you. And if you're married to him, say you smell good too, but don't lie. So glad that you guys made God a priority uh, today. I want to give a shout out to those of you that are watching online. And uh, just remind you that if you're at home for health reasons, we're here for you. We are, uh, we're doing everything we do from this standpoint uh, through the online experience to serve you the very best that we know how. But if you're home out of habit, it's time to come back to church. There's nothing like being in the house. And so let's welcome everybody who's joining us online. We're so glad that you guys are, oh, you can do better than that. Come on, guys. So glad that you guys are a part of this. Hey, this is our last message in the Asking for a Friend series. Before I get into a couple of questions uh, for you, I want to make an announcement. It's kind of a big deal for me personally. And that is uh, I've written a book and it's going to be coming out next week. The book is called Walking with Lions. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, and the shipment's coming in tomorrow, so I'm pretty pumped. I've uh, been working on this uh, last year and, and this year. Uh, but, but God's really doing something special on the team of our church. We have uh, a group within our staff, and we actually call ourselves the Lions. And in this next series, I'll tell you why. Uh, but, but we've just looked at those one another scriptures in the Bible that talks about how we're supposed to be in relationship with each other as believers, what that's supposed to look like. and has to do with transparency and trust and and there's some conflict and a whole bunch of biblical stuff that's not always comfortable that we're doing. And the result is, how many of you know the Bible works? The result is there's just an incredible connection, high capacity, uh, healthy team. And so we were working on this and I would have people from my team say, you need to preach about how you do this. And I'm like, I don't really want to preach it. I just want to live it. You ever been around people that preach better than they live? Did I just say that? And I don't want to be that way. I, I, want, to, I want to live well and, and, uh, and then preach things that help you. And so I, I didn't really want to do that. But what happened was we had leaders, national leaders that would come through. And I was always excited for them to meet you. And I was always excited for them to meet my team. And I was just, oh, just wait till you meet our church, wait till you meet our team. And when they would interact with our team, they would, more than one would say, this is one of the healthiest teams in America. This is the healthiest team I've ever seen. Uh, some leaders would say, our team is not this healthy. <laughs> and how do you know, that's an honest moment. And so, and so they started asking, how do you do this? And so I've been connecting as an overseer for a number of churches to help them build this kind of health within their team. And finally, the, the uh, president of ARC uh, asked me to write a book about that. So I did that in response and ARC is the publisher. So uh, this next week, this book is coming out and it's the forward, listen to this, hang on, because you can clap after this part. The forward is written by John Maxwell. Come on now. All right. So, so next week I'm going to have those available. I want you to buy all of them. I, would, I told my kids their inheritance depends on it. Anyway, and so we're, the series next, uh, the next series will be called Walking with Lions. And I really want you to be here I think it's going to bless your life. I'm going to preach three of them, and then my best friend is going to preach uh, one of them because this is about relationships, and I want you to hear uh, what he has to say too because none of this that I'm writing about and doing I did alone. No, none of it is something that I can take credit for alone, and so I want you to hear not just from me but from uh, somebody who's in a really good relationship with me. Does that make sense? All right, so that's what this series is going to be. Do you guys know what holiday today is. And, and if you want to participate in this little poll, you go to the church app, go to notes, crossroads, or you can go to res.church slash notes, right? And then uh, click on crossroads. All right, you guys are starting to respond. We have a whopping 21 of you signed in. That's great. Okay, we're getting there. All right, it's Pastor John's birthday. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I've just uh, plugged my book and now I'm gonna throw myself a birthday party. No, that's not it. Uh, all right, I'm gonna, I love that that's the most popular one that you guys think I would do that. That's great. It's actually National Chocolate Souffle Day. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, happy National Chocolate Souffle Day. Come on, I can just almost smell it. Get a hot chocolate at the table or something to celebrate. All right, here's the, uh, here's the next thing. You guys, thanks for participating. The next thing is uh, Friends Sunday is next week. That's where we're gonna invite people. Uh, not a lot of churches are open. This is a, and then there are not a lot of other uh, activities going on on Sunday. <clears throat> and 
<clears throat> and this is an opportunity for you and me to invite people to a life-giving church. Uh, this is a life-giving church. I just want you to know that. And, uh, and so right now, if you invite people, they'll probably say yes. And, uh, and we will keep preaching Jesus and presenting the gospel. And you'll see some of your friends and family put their faith in Jesus. And so that's what next week is about. And my question is, do you guys know already who you want to invite? And, um, and so just be thinking this week about who you can invite and bring into this uh, experience. We're going to have food trucks and giveaways. It's going to be totally awesome. Great. All right. So the message today asking for a friend is how do I grow in my faith and how do I overcome unbelief? Now, I've got to tell you a quick story to give you the setup for really what I'm going to be speaking to today. And it starts about 12 years ago, whenever uh, I got the opportunity to come to Res for the first time to be the worship pastor, the music director. I used to be cooler. I was a musician. And uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, so anyway, so I get this invitation to come out. I pray about it. And I have this peace in my heart that I was supposed to come out uh, to Res. And, and my son, uh, he was maybe 10 at the time. And, and he said, Hey dad, how do you know that God is telling us to move? How do you know that God is saying, go to Loveland? How do you know God is real? How many of you know that's a great parenting moment, right? How many of you know you can really screw that up too? Yeah. And I just looked at him and with total sincerity, I said, Oh, I don't know. I believe. I have peace in my heart. I believe that God spoke. And by the way, you need to know this early. I don't know God is real. I believe God is real. And I said, son, we're not called knowers. We're called believers. You can't put the Holy Spirit in a test tube and observe him scientifically. In fact, the Bible says that's not what we're designed to do. That without faith, which is belief without seeing, we can't please God. In fact, the Bible says without faith, we can't go to heaven. Anybody still here with me? That by grace, we are saved through faith. And I, and I just want to warn you against trying to prove to the world God is real. I'm telling you, God will draw people in. Because there's something on the inside of people that's drawn to this concept of God, to the person of Jesus. If you and I will just stop trying to save people through science, we'd be so much more effective. And so what I, I remember being in college and, and having, uh, which means I didn't do drugs. I remember being in college. Some of you can't say that. That was kind of a funny moment, not in my notes. But I remember, you know, going through that, that, that process of, of kind of figuring out things that I believed. And I, I'd go home and I'd decide, I'm going to prove God is real. And I realized the more I studied, the more I realized that all we have is faith and that faith is enough. So that's really what I want to talk about. I'm not really going to try to prove to you the existence of God. I'm not going to try to reason with you on that stuff. Instead, I'm going to speak from a standpoint that, if you can hear this, can, can stay within the discipline of faith. Science is a gift to us. It's not our enemy. But I'm not going to see the Holy Spirit in a test tube. That's what I'm trying to say. I believe. Now, I, I just want to make sure you guys are with me so far. Yes? All right. So with that said, really the issue is how do we help nourish the faith on the inside of you so that it lives large in you? And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So one of the men, this is Mark 9, in the crowd spoke up and said to Jesus, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. He foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So he's having some kind of epileptic uh, episode or a seizure of some kind. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, You faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. And he replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into fire and into water. So he no doubt would have been scarred up and hurt by this. A lot of trauma. The spirit's trying to kill him. Have mercy on us. Look at, here it is. And help us. 
if you can. I really think that's where a lot of us have doubt. It's like, okay, I, I do believe in a God, but, but do I really believe that God can help me or will help me in my situation? Look how Jesus responded. He said, what do you mean if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. Oh, I don't think you heard the words of Jesus right there. He said, anything is possible. Anything is possible if a person believes. And then the father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. I do believe, but I also have some questions. I do believe, but I have some cynicism. I have some wounds. I have questions. There were times I prayed for something and it didn't happen. What do I do with that? I believe, but help me in my unbelief. And if that's you, that's really who I want to talk to today. Does that make sense? And what we're going to find is some really beautiful lessons, some keys from the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. A lot of people call this uh, the hall of faith. And, uh, and so with that in mind, what, what this is, is just, it's a list. It's a story after story of great men and women who had great faith in God. And then awesome things happen in their life. Look what Hebrews begins to talk about here. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for. Faith, this is a definitional verse. Faith is something. What is it? The confidence in what we hope for. Assurance about what we do not see. Uh, Ten years ago, I woke up on a Thursday morning right next to my wife. By the way, that's the only person I wake up to in the morning. Man, this is funny stuff, guys. Come on, you got to do your part. I'm doing my part. I woke up and, um, and I had this feeling like, and I said to my wife, something significant is going to happen today. Now, I am a fan of Joel Osteen, so you can judge me all you want to, but I'm not the guy that wakes up like, today is going to be a great day. You know, it's like, that's not me, right? I don't have his enthusiasm. I also don't have his abs. That guy is 58 and he has abs. You just need, I'm just saying, it's amazing. So I got distracted from my message right then. Okay. So I want you to think, (laughs) so I was like, today's going to be a significant day. But did I have proof? No. Was there an appointment? No. Did somebody say, hey, tomorrow something great's going to happen? No, I just had faith. But I was assured that something was going to happen. Two or three hours later, my predecessor, John Stocker, without any appointment, called me in his office and said, you're going to take this church moving forward. How many of you know that's a significant day, right? And so there was my proof, but I had faith before I had proof. And I think that's the way God sets it up, where we start our journey in faith before we ever see with our eyes. You guys with me today? All right, so we're going to learn some lessons from, let me look at the scripture really quickly. It says, uh, faith is the confidence of what we hope for, assurance about what we do not see, This is what the ancients were commended for. So Hebrews 11 are about these ancient heroes. Now let's look at them. Abel's lesson is put God first. Everybody say that. Put God first. first. All right, let's look at this. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. Now it it begins to contrast, contrast the way Cain gave versus the way Abel gave. Gave. And I want you to see this. In the course of time, meaning eventually, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. Now, some of you have an in the course of time kind of faith. You have an in the course of time kind of relationship with God. It's like, yeah, I believe in God. Do you pray? Eh, I get around to it sometimes. Maybe not as much as I'd like. Do you connect in godly community? Well, you know, from time to time. Do, do, do you read the Bible? Eh, nah. How do you know? That's an actual answer. I don't know how to spell it, but it is. And this is what Cain brought, a kind of an in the course of time kind of gift. But look at this. But Abel brought an offering, fat portions from some of the, everybody say, firstborn. It wasn't an eventually kind of faith. It was, I'm going to give God my first. I'm going to give God my first. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. Some of us are like, you know, God's on the list. Well, where is he on the list? Well, I mean, he's on there. He ought to be grateful for that. And I just want to tell you, if God is not first place on your list, he's not on your list. I'm just going to take your silence as like complete support of everything I'm saying right now. All God knows how to be is first place. By the way, 
I hear the most beautiful baby in the whole world crying right now. And I want you guys to know that's the sound of our future. So if you don't like that, you can just get over it. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, Enoch's lesson is to walk with God. Enoch's lesson from Hebrews 11 is to walk with God. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as the one who pleased God. I want to talk to you for just a second about walking with God. Okay, it's awesome that we're here together. We talked about, you know, make, putting God first place. Let me tell you how you did that. First place means you came to God's house on the first day of the week. When you tithe, you're giving God the first of your income. And there's a blessing, such a rich blessing on those who tithe. Does that make sense, guys? But now we talk about walking. So we start with that first position where we give to God, but then we walk it out. We start doing life with God. Um, this team that God's put together at this church that's so healthy, it didn't really happen. It didn't form like that just in the office. It happened a lot walking around Equalizer Lake and other bodies of water, uh, mostly. <laughs> and uh, I walked so many miles just one-on-one -on -one with these leaders, spending time with them, processing with them, praying with them, and uh, just doing what I can to be available to help them move forward. There's something about getting out of the of the office and getting out there, doing some top golf, playing games together, doing life together. You guys hear me today? That, that kind of takes you out of those old patterns and moves you into healthy patterns. And, and God wants the same thing. He's like, I don't want you to just experience me on Sunday. One of the things I pray for you guys after church is when you're walking out, I'm like, God, walk with them. Go with them, linger with them. I, I want you to serve a Monday God and a Tuesday God. Walk with him. Do life with him. There's a scripture where Jesus says, behold, this is in the book of Revelations. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if you'll let me in, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna eat with you. I'm gonna have dinner with you. I want you to think about that a minute. By the way, that scripture was written to believers. That's not a salvation scripture. Jesus is saying, hey, you're, you're believers in me. You're, you're going to heaven. You've got salvation, but I'm standing at the door of your life. I'd like to do dinner with you. I want to do life with you. I want to walk with you. When you do that, your faith will begin to thrive. When you let God into your home, when you let God uh, in, into your family, into your workplace, into your community, and you walk with him. One of the most common points of feedback I get from people in the church, at least that they admit to me, they come up to me and they're like, man, you're like a real person, which I love that. <laughs> Like, believe it or not, preachers are of the human species. <laughs> You're like a real person. I, what I take that to mean is like, like, I'm actually walking with God. This is not just an office relationship. Like, this comes through in forgiveness and second chances and faithfulness. And see what I'm saying? And good humor. <laughs> don't make me tell you, don't make me remind you that Jesus was fun at parties. Don't make me remind you that the first miracle he performed was to, to turn 120 barrels of water into 120 barrels of wine. How many of you know, that's a lot. He was fun at parties. Don't send me an email. The point is walk with God. Let God live loud in you. The next lesson we learn, because it'll grow your faith. Noah's lesson is act on God's word. Look at the faith of Noah. This is amazing. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, he didn't see it yet, in holy fear, he built an ark to save his family. Hey, Noah, yes, God, build an ark. What's an ark? It's going to save you from the flood. What's a flood? Here are the dimensions. Okay. And he built it. Some of us, we hear from God and we're like, well, once it makes sense, I'll get around to it. When it makes sense to me, I'll take that step. And, and the word of the Lord's kind of hitting you like, you need to join that small group. Oh, that's just another thing. I mean, I know I probably do, but I'll get around to it. Oh, you need to be a giver. You need to tithe. Oh, you need to serve. You need to forgive that person. You need to have that hard conversation. It's like, oh, okay, I hear what you're saying. Let me think about it. Let me ask you, if you told one of your kids, hey, take out the garbage, and they're like, hmm, 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 that's good. Amen. <laughs> Wasn't that good? 
Yeah, let's talk about that today. We're going to talk about that today. <laughs> you going to do it? You going to talk about it? But are you going to do anything about it? Well, you know, I don't know. I think about it. But boy, that one was mm, good. How many of you know delayed obedience is disobedience? And, and then you hear the word of the Lord every week and then you're like, mm, oh, that's good. That is good. Man, that's good. Well, are you, you going to do something about it? Mm, but Noah just went for it and God richly rewarded him and his faith was stronger. And when you just say yes, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing the word of God. But the Bible also says when you hear the word and you don't do it, it has no value in your life. You guys hear what I'm saying? When you hear the word and you do it, faith explodes in you. Abraham's lesson was wait patiently. Bible straight up says it. Look at this. So after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. The Bible says that we inherit everything God has for us through faith and patience. Tommy Barnett, he's about 85 years old, a great leader. Johnny Cash wrote a song about that guy. Come on, how many know that's just awesome? I almost said BA, but I don't want to get in trouble. Like, what does that mean? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Tommy Barnett. Well, the last time I saw him preach, he, he just wanted to show everybody he still got it. He did a, like a, just a vertical jump higher than I ever have at any point in my life. And I was like, I don't like you either. Him and Joel Osteen. I just don't like how fit they are. <laughs> All right. But one of the things he said was people overestimate what they can accomplish in two years and underestimate what they can accomplish in 10 Boy, we, people underestimate what they can accomplish in 10 years, but we overestimate what we can accomplish quick. It's like, man, I can get this done tomorrow. I can get it done quick. It's like, hey, but if you just kind of move into that long game, so much is available to you. That's good preaching. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's super nice. Moses' lesson is don't trust your feelings. Now, I just talked about emotions in a message, previous message. And how God speaks to us through them. And I'm not really talking about emotions as much as I'm talking about don't be moved by pressure. A lot of times we let pressure drive us away from making the right call. And when we do that, it diminishes our faith. It's discouraging. Okay, I want you to see how Moses, there was enormous pressure on him, but he chose to follow Jesus. And yes, I said Jesus on purpose. I know he's in the Old Testament. But I'm going to show you biblically that he followed God with Jesus Christ in mind. It's a prophetic moment. I want you to see this in Hebrews. Talk about faith. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Talk about pressure, being in the royal family. He's like, no, I don't need this. I want to follow God instead. I want to be with my people. So he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace. Look at these next words. Don't miss one syllable of what I'm about to say to you, because this is amazing. Moses, thousands of years before Jesus was born, regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasure of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. And by faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. You talk about pressure when the king is mad. That's pressure. He didn't give into it. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible, not just invisible, but who was yet to come. There are people in scripture at such faith in the Old Testament, they looked ahead to see Jesus. And in one case, in David's case, he received mercy from the cross before the cross ever happened. David said, I, I would sacrifice to pay for the sin, but you don't require it. What does that mean? That means that somehow when the blood of Jesus hit the earth from the cross, it went both forward and backwards in time. And people that had the faith to look forward and to accept by faith the grace of Jesus that they could receive forgiveness. Come on, that's, un, that's just crazy. That takes faith. And Moses, there was no one named Jesus Christ on the earth. But he said, you know what? I'm going to consider this future Messiah and I'm going to choose to be. What does that mean? 
It means that Moses left the throne and the castle and the kingdom to save a people. Just like Jesus left the throne and a castle and a kingdom to come here and save you and me. Yeah. And he saw him who is invisible. By the way, 2 Corinthians said for, says, for we live by faith and not by sight. Some things cannot be reasoned. It takes faith. And Joshua's lesson is thank God in advance. Look at this. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. At the end of seven days, they just had a worship service. Did they get what they wanted yet? No. Just thank you, God. You're awesome. Then the miracle came. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, don't be anxious about anything, but, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, look at this, with thanksgiving, <clears throat> present your request to God. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I hate clearing my throat right in your ear, but it just happened. A lot of times we have these big things that we're believing for, but we forget to be grateful now. And the things that we're believing for actually start to work against our faith. Instead of saying, it hasn't happened yet, but if God never does another thing for me, he's done so much, then I'm going to be grateful for the rest of my life. You know, I've never met a happy person who was ungrateful. I've never met an unhappy person who was grateful. I wish I could dance better right now. I'd be all over this stage because you seem to like that. All right, keep going. Final lesson is God always does the right thing. The rest of Hebrews 11, that 11th chapter, is just one horrible story after another. These people had faith and they were killed for it. They had faith and they didn't see what they were believing for. They had faith and they were persecuted. They had faith and they were disappointed. They had faith and they were betrayed. But you know what? They were just as celebrated as all the people that did awesome things with their life. Why? Because it's not about getting the stuff. It's about living by faith. It says these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them, don't miss this, a lot of you are hurt because you don't know this is a promise from God or this is a reality. None of them received everything that had been promised. Everybody look at me. Uh, please don't miss this part. This is the most important thing I'll say to you today. My intense hope and, and, and earnest desire is that I die without seeing everything that I believed for. You wanna know why? Because I would rather have my last breath on earth be filled with faith for something ahead than to have some sense that uh, it's all behind me now. I don't want to waste a breath with that kind of thought. None of them received what had been promised. But look at why. Because God had planned something better. I believe you and I, <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to go to heaven. And, and I've heard people preach about heaven. It's like, man, when we get to heaven, we're just going to hear, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> it's beautiful. You know what I think? I think the collective expression when we get to heaven is gonna be, oh, you were right. Or maybe if you're from the South, golly. <laughs> you had something even better. And we're so hurt right now, but it's because we've forgotten that God's ways are better than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Then he's doing something so good, you and I can't even comprehend it. And everything he does is good. Every good thing comes from God. And that ought to give you peace. And the Bible says, the peace of God, which transcends understanding. God is not just a brain. You and I can't comprehend him just with our finite minds. It takes faith. The peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen? You guys feel your faith kind of built up today? My prayer is that you walk out of here and Jesus just walks with you into your every day. What I want to do right now is speak to a group of you in the room. You know you're not right with God and you want to get right with God 
today. If that's you, I want to pray for you right where you sit. I'm not going to embarrass you in any way, but I would like to know who I'm praying for. So every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm the only one looking around. If that's you and you'd say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to get right with God today. Would you raise your hand so I can see you? Hey, we are so thankful you were able to join us today. And before we conclude this moment, I want to give you an opportunity to take that first step in starting a personal relationship with Jesus. And if you want to take that first step, just pray this prayer along with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I have sinned and lived life my own way, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead, and I turn away from my sin and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I want to trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In your name I pray. Amen. Come on, if you made that decision and prayed that prayer with me today, we'd love to follow up with you and just give you some next steps on this journey. Just follow the link in the description that says, I made the decision to follow Jesus. The best next step we can offer for anyone who has started a relationship with Jesus, whether that was 30 seconds ago or 30 years ago, is Growth Track. If you've never gone through Growth Track, it's now an easy on-demand process that you can experience at your own pace wherever you are. And this is a great way we can help you discover the purpose that God created you for and use that purpose to make a difference in the world. And you can find the link to Growth Track in the description of this video. The video description also offers links to follow us on social media, visit our website, connect with us, or request prayer. Thank you again for growing with us today. We hope to connect with you soon, and we'll see you again next week for church in person or online.